Well, good evening. So glad to have you with, with us again. And I just thank God that you've decided to take this time to, to get before God to find out what word he has for you tonight. And as, he, as you hear the word, uh, you prepare, you, you can block out distractions. As you hear the word, you receive the word as a word from God to you. And it will cause you to be blessed and cause you to prosper. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, just get ready and, uh, and let's receive from the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost has something he wants to say to each of us. Even, even as I minister tonight, I believe that God has a word. He's going to say something uh, through me that's going to benefit and help me. And so I'm coming expecting. So I just challenge you to always come expecting. And I thank you for, for doing that. Let's just pray and get started. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you, Lord God, that you've already heard our prayers concerning this broadcast. And I'm asking you, Spirit of God, to let me say only the word that you need and want said. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're ministering to your people the way you desire. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, we take that, that blindness off of our eyes, we unstop our ears, Lord God, so we can hear what thus say the Lord. And Father, I thank you that our lives will be forever changed as we hear and obey your anointed word. And Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for everything you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, let's get started. And uh, I, as I began to pray and seek the face of God, uh, God said, uh, I need you to get back on distractions and, and deceptions again. I, I need you to begin to just encourage my people because times are coming. Uh, they're here. And uh, if we are not careful, uh, the very elite will be deceived. And so as we begin to get this word, hide this word down on the inside of us, we'll begin to build ourselves up. And uh, as we begin to build ourselves up, we'll begin to hear what God is saying. You know, of course, one of the major things we need to do is to get into the word of God and allow that word to become a part of our lives, a part of our very being. But I want you to know that just getting into the word may not be enough. You need to apply the word. You need to allow the word to, to guide your everyday activity. And when we begin to do that, we'll see the power of God. Now, I wrote down deception is causing someone to accept something as true when it's really false, when it's really not true. So deception, in other words, you'll be deceived when you accept something that's true as true. When it's not true, it's really false. And I'm going to tell you that there's going to come a season, and like I say, it's already here. When people are being deceived, they're accepting something as true when it's really false. Distraction, now, on the other hand, it's uh, something to divert your attention away from something else. In other words, your, your attention is over here, uh, and all of a sudden you hear something over here, and your attention is diverted from here to here. Now, uh, uh, a diversion, uh, a distraction is not necessarily good or bad. In other words, your attention could be focused on something good, or it could be focused on something bad. But whatever is focused on, something causes your attention to be distracted to something else. Now, on the other hand, deception is causing you to believe a lie. In other words, something is already false. It's a lie, and you are deceived to believe it as being true. So the difference is uh, deception is always a detriment. In other words, you're believing something that you shouldn't be. The, uh, distraction, you could be distracted away from something evil, which is a good thing. Now, you could be distracted away from something good, which is a bad thing. So we need to get these things in focus and say, God, what do I do? How do I handle distractions and deceptions? Now, uh, let me just share this with you. Close friends and families, uh, respected religious leaders, uh, people in authority, those type of people have the greatest potential to distract you or the greatest potential to to, to cause you to be uh, deceived. Um, and that's what we have to be careful. Now, what's going to hinder that, what's going to help us with that, is getting knowledge. And uh, in particular, we're talking about the knowledge of the Word of God. Because we're talking about the believers not being distracted, or particularly not being deceived during these times. And as we begin to see, seek the face of God, we begin to see that. And what I want to do is I want to begin a little review. Um, prophets encouraged us in three scriptures to, to meditate on, 
Uh, first Timothy, what was that? Three, uh, uh, four, one through uh, three, I guess. And Second Timothy, three, one through five. And also Mark chapter 13, uh, verse 21 and 22. Now, in Mark, it talks about the false Christ and prophets arising. And they're coming to deceive. Now, they're coming to deceive. They're coming to get you to believe a lie. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2, it's talking about there'll be many that will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, they're listening to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, of course, these are just focal points of, of these particular passages of Scripture. We need to obey the Word of God, and, and the Word of God encourages us to get into these Scriptures, meditate on them. And then in 2 Timothy 3 and 5, it, it talks about how um, um, <clears throat> this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. It said, men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. The unholy, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. You see what we got, we've got to do is realize during the last days, different things are going to happen. They'll be heady and high-minded. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. See, when you deny the power of the gospel, when you deny the power of God, you are denying the very essence of who God is and why he came, why he sent Jesus. And as we begin to say, Lord, help me, help me, Father, I be, to get focused and stay focused, not to be deceived and for sure not, uh, not to be distracted. And as I'm staying focused on you, I'll not be distracted away from what you have called me to do. And we'll begin to see the power of God like never before. Now, of course, you know, we shared this a while back. You have to have faith in the word of God. You have to have faith in God. You can't reason the things out of God in your mind. You've got to trust God. Uh, what is faith? Faith is the proof that you have what you can't see. Let me just say it that way. You need proof? Faith is my proof. Faith is also the, uh, the manifestation of what I'm hoping God for, what I believe in God for. So if I'm going to walk in faith and I choose to walk in faith, if somebody says, prove to me that you have that, prove to me that you're saved, prove to me that you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're born again. Well, my proof is my, my, proof is my faith. I'm holding on to the faith because I believe God and I believe his word. His word says if I just confess the Lord Jesus with my mouth, believe with my heart, I'm saved. If I ask him for the Holy Ghost, he gives me the Holy Ghost. Notice that none of the scriptures in the word talks about how I feel. Talks about whether I can feel it or not. Talk about whether I can see it or not. No, it says faith. Without faith, it's impossible to believe God. I've got to believe this word. Now, there's a lot of stuff in the word that we don't understand. And we may never understand it until the day when Christ comes. But I want you to know it's not our job. It's not your job to understand it. It's our job to believe it. Walk by faith and not by sight. And the reason I'm driving this home, because I've, I've got a, a passage of scripture, I'm building all this up to a passage of scripture where I want to show you that, you know, the, the Bible talks about even the very elect to be deceived, if possible, if it was possible. What's not going to make it possible? You're standing on the word of God. You're not allowing family, you're not allowing friends, you're not allowing influential people, uh, influential people to influence you. You are standing with the word. You are standing with the word. People of God, the man of God or the woman of God that stays and stands on that word will see the manifestations of the glory of God and the power of God. And we're seeing in these last days where people are, are beginning to, to, to rise up and take the uh, positions and places of authority. And I want to encourage you to, 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 to judge the prophetic word. Now, as, as, uh, there's a, I believe there's a special anointing coming upon the prophet of Selena, and I believe as she, as she begins to prophesy that word, as she listened to the voice of God and began to speak that word, you, you need, we need to grab hold to that. And when God speaks through her, through that prophetic word, we need to apply that. We need to grab hold to it. Because God has 
has set, has called, anointed, and appointed everybody, every person into the kingdom to fulfill their assignment. And their assignment is designed to, to set the captives free. It's designed to, to, to destroy yokes of bondages. And as we begin to seek the face of God, we'll begin to see the power of God. Isaiah 55 says what? My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not yours. They're higher than you can imagine. So quit trying to think. Quit trying to figure out the word and believe the word. Have faith in the word. Because, and you see, that's where many of us get tripped up, get distracted, get deceived because we'll try to figure it out. See, you're not going to be able to figure it out. You've got to be able to trust it. You've got to be able to have that faith. And as you begin to seek the face of God and say, Lord, help me. And you, you ask, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So as we get into the word, our faith will be built up. But we can ask, Lord, help me. Give me, help me to have faith. I want, Lord God, I, I want to resist this distraction. I want to resist the onslaught of the enemy. And I need help. And as we begin to do that, we'll begin to see the power of God. We'll begin to see the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, let's look at in Matthew 24. I want to... Uh, uh, I'm still laying a foundation for the scripture I want to get into because I believe uh, as I begin to, 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 as we begin to take note of these scriptures, as we begin to hide them in our spirit, as we begin to allow them to come up on the inside of us, bubble up on the inside of us, we'll begin to see the power of God manifest in our lives. And that's what we're looking for, manifestations of the power of God. We're looking for manifestations of the miracles, the healings. We're looking for when we pray, Lord God, we're looking for a situations to change instantly because the word has said so. And so we're seeking the face of God. And as we do that, we're seeing the power of God. Matthew 24 and 4 and 5 uh, says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There'll be times when, and why is that? Because the enemy, the, your enemy, the adversary, the devil, know there's an anointing on your life. Know even that you may have been called from your mother's womb. Knowing Lord, when, that when you speak, when you declare, uh, that you're beginning to declare, to declare the oracles of God. And so he's trying to stop your purpose. And so he's going to send all kinds of distractions, everything he can in your way to get you to believe a lie, to get you deceived. Many of our uh, great men of God, women of God, are walking in deception. And that's why we've got to pray. They're walking in deception because they're trying to figure out the word rather than act on the word, rather than believe the word. Men and women of God, people of God, Let's seek the face of God. Let's fight this thing with everything in us. Let's help our family members fight it with everything in us. Let's help our leaders fight it with everything in them. Because God is doing some exceeding great things. Now, that's Matthew 24, 4 and 5. Let's look at Matthew 24, 11 and 12. It says, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. These are the words of Jesus. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity is flowing rapidly. There won't be many people that's walking in the love of God. Deception. 23 and 24, Matthew 24 says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, don't believe him. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders among uh, <coughs> me, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Three times in this passage of scripture, Jesus warn, warns us about the false prophet, the false Christ. It was so important to him, and, and he's getting ready to go back to the Father. And what he's saying is, I need you to be aware. He's putting this, he's penned these words, allow these words to be penned just for me and you. Just be aware. You love God. 
You want, you want all that God has for you. You want the anointing, uh, you want God to, to anoint you so he can use you as a mouthpiece. You want God to, God's blessings to be upon you. You want to be an example of Jesus Christ on this earth. And what, God, you know, the, the word is trying to get us to do is not be distracted. Because what you want, you can have. Let's not, let's not look so much for the natural feelings. Let's walk by faith and not by sight. Let's go by the word said. Let's believe what the word says, whether we understand it or not. Because, like I said earlier, many times you won't understand it. Oh, but God is doing some great things. I'm trusting with all my heart and leaning not into my own understanding. Romans 6, 17 and 18 says, <coughs> Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've learned and avoid them. If they're causing division a, a contrary to the doctrine that you learn, it says avoid them. Mark them and, and avoid them. Now, it's talking about believers. It's talking about people of the, of the same household of faith. <clears throat> They've gotten some kind of way distracted, but their distractions have led, has led them away from the things of God, the things that you've learned. Says the fourth them, verse 18. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. See, they can go in and they can reason with words. They can go in and they can make the word of God sound of none effect, sound irrelevant. They can make the word of God seem like it contradicts itself. But when, and if you sit there and you listen and you meditate on that, it says, uh, it, it, that's why it says for us to avoid them. Because, not that you hate them, but you don't want that feeding fed into your spirit. Remember, faith without faith is impossible to please God. What is faith again? Faith is believing. Uh, it, it's the proof that you have. Everything God said you have. Somebody said, prove you're saved. Prove you're healed. Prove you're made whole. Prove that you're prosperous. You say, I'm prosperous. I'm healed because the Bible says it and I stand on the word of God. I stand on faith. I walk by faith. As people of God, we have to walk by faith. We have to listen to the word of God. Receive it into our spirit and obey the word of God. No matter who tried to distract me, no matter who tried to get me off track, I'm going to stick with the word because the word of God is forever settled. That is my necessary food. That's what I need. And I want to encourage you to, with everything in you to fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight because we win. It's a good fight because the results of the, uh, of the fight is that I walk in all my healing, deliverance, everything. So let's fight with everything in us. Now, all of that, everything we've talked about, we're building up to this. And I want to I want to read this passage of scripture. And I want what I probably do is read through it and we'll come back and highlight the points. What are we talking about again tonight? Deceptions and distractions. Deceptions, let me say it again. You, you, know, <clears throat> you believe a lie. You believe something that is true when it's actually a lie. So how do I avoid that? Well, of course knowledge will do that. But let me tell you this. We're going to have to seek the face of God like never before. Because there are many people that's full of the word of God. Somebody said, well, you need to get into the Word and find out in the Word. Well, see, when deceptions come, it'll have you believing that the Word that you read is not true. It's a lie. It's, the, it's contradictory. So you have to depend on the Holy Spirit to take this Word, the Holy Spirit taking this Word and making this Word alive 
in our heart, alive in our spirit. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to make this word alive, we'll be able to walk in victory in every area. I have the proof that I'm here. I have everything I need. I don't need nothing else. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not going by any contradictions because I find a scripture what God says, what God says about me, and I'm walking in that. And as we begin to walk in that, we'll begin to see the power of God. Don't be distracted now. Walk in victory. Now, let's, let's look at the scripture in 1 Kings. We're going to 1 Kings chapter 13. We're going to read a good bit of it. I'm probably going to pick it up in verse 7. But uh, what's happening here is um, God uh, sends, a, sends a man of God from Judah to Bethel to Jeroboam. Jeroboam is the, is the king, was the king of Israel. And uh, Jeroboam was, was a wicked king of Israel, one of the wicked kings of Israel. And so this man of God comes to Bethel to tell him, just there's going to be a, 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 a king, Josiah by name, and he's going to destroy everything you've done. He's going to fix everything you've done. Well, of course, Jeroboam didn't want to hear this, so he began to stretch forth his hand to take the man and his hand with him. And as a sign, the man of God said, as a sign, this altar is going to be uh, destroyed and the ashes are going to waste. Well, that's exactly what happened. The, the Jeroboam asked to be healed, asked this man of God to heal my hand. You know, ask God to heal my hand. So he did, and when he did, the altar was destroyed. He said, that's the sign that Josiah is coming. In other words, he was, he was so attuned to the voice of God that he gave a word that's going to happen years later, but right then uh, something happened that proved that he had heard from God and Josiah would come. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, God is, uh, this, this man of God was so attuned until he spoke the word, knowing that he'd heard from God, knowing that God was going to call that, call that word to come to pass. And I believe, let me tell you that I believe, we'll, you know, God is speaking to people of God, men and women of God, to deliver a prophetic word, a word that you may not, you know, agree with, a word that you, a word that you may not even want to hear. But if it lines up with the word of God, you better listen and obey, because God is doing some great things in our lives. We're asking God for great things. We're asking Him for for, for things in our city, state, and nation. We're, we're asking for great things, so we're expecting Him to do great things. So now, with that uh, introduction, let me begin reading in verse 7. And like I say, I'm going to probably read through verse uh, 22. I'm going to do a lot of reading, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to reiterate, because I want to show you how important, oh my God, how important it is for us as men and women of God to fight this deception. Verse 7, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 7. And the king <clears throat> said unto the man of God, he, this is what King Jeroboam said. Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I'll give you a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so hath it uh, so, for so was it charged me by the word of the Lord. So in other words, God told me, eat no bread. Drink no water, nor turn again by the same way in which you came. So he went another way, and returned not by the way which he had come to Bethel. And there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. In other words, there was a prophet already in Bethel. We're going to talk about that later. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. And the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told their father. And their father said unto them, Which way he went? And his sons uh, had seen what way he, the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereupon. And went after the man of God, and found him sitting on an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came to 
uh, from Judah? He said, I am. And he said unto him, come with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not come. This is what the man of God said. I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither shall I eat bread or drink water in this place. For or because it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt not eat bread or drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, this is what the old prophet of Bethel said, I'm a prophet also like you are. An angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with thee unto thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. Because, but he lied to him. That was a lie. He lied. Now, this was a prophet. Now, it wasn't that he wasn't an old prophet, but he was being allowing his flesh to rule. In other words, he's exactly the opposite of what God told him. He said, don't eat bread or drink water. This angel, this prophet said an angel told him to do exactly the opposite. When God has spoken to you, you've got to be careful when something comes along that telling you to do the opposite. Verse 19. And uh, he went back with him and did eat bread in the house and drank water. And it came to pass. And they said at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. In other words, as they were eating, as he was eating the bread and drinking the water, doing what God told him not to do, the word of the Lord came to the prophet, the old prophet that brought him back, that deceived him, that lied to him. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus say the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came back, and you eaten bread, and you drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. He said, Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy father. You're going to die. How is it that God could use a lying prophet one time and then the next time, use them to prophesy. People of God, I want you to know that God has a call and a purpose for you. And the enemy has people, has tri uh, tricks and traps to derail you. That's why it's so important. And, uh, and the people that's going to derail you, like I said earlier, going to be people, the people that have the potential to derail you, a people that you respect, people with potential, potential leaders, your family, the people that you're close with. And, 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 and what, what's going to happen is, what needs to happen is, you need to keep and stay focused with the things of God. God has a plan for your life. And as we begin to seek the face of God and ask him, Lord, I want to do what you told me to do and not be distracted, not allow a spirit of deception uh, to cause me to believe a lie. And we see here the man of God believed a lie from the old prophet. Now, let's walk back through these scriptures. I'm not going to be long, but I just want to walk back through them, through them to show you how critical it is to obey the word of God. When you know you heard from God, don't allow no, don't allow no old prophet to distract you. Don't allow no politician, don't allow no learned person, don't allow, I don't care how long they've been saved and been in the Word. If what they're telling you doesn't line up with the Word or doesn't line up with what you believe God has spoken to you, go back to God. Go back to Him and say, Lord, what should I do? And He'll tell you every time. Now, let's look at this. Okay, now, so the king, Jeroboam, said to the man of God, Come with me. Now, so what? He resisted the king. In other words, when I say he resisted it, he listened to what God said. This is the king, the leader. So the king said, come, with, come back with me. He said, in verse 2, 8, he said, you come back with me. And, and uh, he said, then now, he said, then come back with me and I'll give you a reward. The man of God said, you can give me half your house. I can't come back with you. Because what you're asking me to do goes contrary against what God told me to do. 
God told me not to go back, not to eat bread or drink water in this place. And that's what you want me to come back to do? In other words, let's look at this again. It says, uh, <clears throat> he said, he'll give me half your house. He said, if you give me half your house, I won't go back with you. He said, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of God. <clears throat> The word of God told me to eat no bread, drink no water, and don't even go back the same way. So I've got to obey God. Okay. So when he came to Bethel, he came at the directions of, of the Holy Spirit, at the directions of the word of God. Now, so he began to, he began to go back. Now what I want you to re re realize and recognize is this man came from Judah to Bethel. And now in verse 11, 1 Kings 13, 11 says, <clears throat> And there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. In other words, this old prophet was already there. Why couldn't God use him to do what this man of God did? <clears throat> because he was flaky. Not that he wasn't a prophet because the, the uh, scripture still called him an old prophet. And another thing that, that sets, sets this apart is that he heard from God when the man of God disobeyed God. So, look at this. <clears throat> so his sons came back and they began, I, I could imagine, uh, they, they come back to him and they said, Daddy, you are, you are a prophet. But this prophet, man of God, came and began to tell the king these words. And he began to tell him what the king, uh, what he told the king. He began to tell him about how Josiah was going to come. He said, he came from uh, a Judah over here to Bethel. And you're already in Bethel. I'm, I'm just imagining it. So I'm sure now. That's why the, you know, the, the, the old prophet said, well, which way did he go? Sell me an ass and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go after him. So that's what they did. And he went after the man of God, verse 14. And he found him sitting under the tree. And he told him, and this is what he said in verse 15: Come with me and eat bread. And he said, the man of God said, Oh, I can't come back and eat bread with thee, neither uh, drink water. For it has been said by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread or drink water there. Not turn again by the way which thou went. Came in. And he said unto him, Well, I'm a prophet, just like you. You're a prophet, I'm a prophet. And then he said, An angel spoken unto me. <clears throat> that should have been a red flag right there. Angels don't negate the word of God, angels don't negate what God has spoken to you. If God has spoken to you, I don't care what kind of angel. What somebody says about an angel. Stay with God. Now you wonder, you know, but I believe that because even though this man of God was able to resist the king, when this old prophet said, an angel has spoken to me for me to bring you back, exactly the opposite. He said, bring you back to my house that you may eat bread and drink water. Exactly the opposite of what he knew God had told him. Here this old prophet said, old prophet said, God want me to bring you back so you can do exactly what he knew God had told him not to do. That's why we're going to have to be so sensitive to the spirit of God. Especially in these last time, last days, we're going to have to seek the face of God like never before. As I was studying and preparing for this, I was thinking, Lord, don't let us miss you. Don't let us miss out. We know you've called us, anointed us, and appointed us for this season. We don't want to miss it. We don't want to be distracted. Because there are repercussions for getting distracted. While they were sitting eating, while this man of God was doing what God told him not to do, eating bread and drink water, while they were eating, it says, mm, verse 20, 
And it came to pass that they said at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. In other words, came unto the old prophet. The word of the Lord came unto the old prophet. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus say the Lord, for as much as thou disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and you've not kept his commandment, but you came back, you eaten bread and you drank water, of which the Lord told you not to do. He said, your carcass shall not come into the sepulchre of your father. You're going to die. What a word. What a condemnation. What a dread. Uh, to know that you've given your life to serve God. And now, the slip up, allowing people you trust to get you distracted from what God has called you to do. Let me just share something with you too. People you trust, they may be trying to get you to do good things. But good things are not necessarily God things. It may be good for other people, but not for you. What has God called you to do? What has, who has God called you to minister to? Just because one person is, is successful um, going to the hospitals, God may want you to go to the prisons. God may want you to go on the street. God may want you to just go to, in your neighborhood. God may want you to just stay in your family. Let your family see. Distractions will come when things look glamorous. When things look more rewarding. You don't want to be deceived. Not in this season. Not in this time. And I want to encourage you right now. I want you to ask God, say, God, what do you want me to do? Am I being led astray? In other words, am I going down a path that you've not called me to go down? I'm going down this path because I think it's a good path. So-and-so and so-and-so and -so go down this path, and I've uh, aligned myself with them, and I want to I want to be and do and I want to get the results that they are getting. But God has called you and he's told you and you know it. Get back. Let's get back in line. Let's get back with God. You may not be called to preach in a poor pit. You may not be called to, 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 to do the thing that's going to uh, maybe get your name out in the world. But the Bible says, if you humble yourself on the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you. I would rather for God to exalt me than for the President of the United States. I want to please God. I want the anointing to destroy yokes and remove burdens. I want God to use me to set captives free. Because when I walk in the call of God that he's placed on my life, when I walk in the anointing that he's placed on my life, I will be successful and victorious. I begin to hear the voice of God. And as I be, obey the voice of God, I'll see the power of God manifest. I believe the word of God, God is talking to some of us right now to get back on track. Thank God we're under a, 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 good, a new dispensation, under a new covenant. So all we got to, to do now, since we missed it, since we've gotten off track, all I've got to do is say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. And before you get the words out your mouth, he's already done it. Don't let the enemy condemn you. Say, he's talking about you. You see how, you know you're not supposed to be doing such a thing. Well, for, repent. Because the enemy, will, he, he's putting those uh, condemnations, those dots of, of, of con, uh, darts of condemnation, he's shooting, uh, shooting them at you. So he think, oh, you might as well quit now. He's a lie. You're not going to quit. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You will fulfill the call of God. You are anointed and appointed and called for such a time as this. God's uh, purpose is being manifested in your life. And you will not be distracted. You will challenge every uh, assignment of the enemy. 
You're, you will resist every assignment of the enemy. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for that power. And thank you for the glory. Thank you for the anointing. Now, Father, I thank you right now, Lord God. You, you told us, you've encouraged us to watch out for distractions, deceptions. But you've also said, hear the word of God as it comes out of the mouth of the man or the woman of God. Father, I thank you for discernment right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you for your love and your compassion flowing through us. And as we hear your word, we'll recognize it as your word and we'll obey it. And I thank you right now, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to share something with you. You know, you may not have, you might have just gotten born again. You may not know much about the Bible, but God still want to speak to you. He still want to give you wisdom and direction. He still want to show you how to fulfill the plan that he has for you. Get along with him and be sensitive to him. And say, God, I thank you for speaking to me in a clear, distinct voice. And he'll direct you into the word. Get into the word of God. Begin to read the word. Begin to allow that word to just infiltrate, just to consume you. And you'll begin to see the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're not born again, you need to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Just believe that he's the son of God, that God sent him to bring you back, to bring, into your, bring you into your purpose. And but now that you're beginning to walk into your purpose, you're asking God, you say, God, I believe that you sent Jesus to bring me back and I want him to come into my life and my heart. He comes and he'll direct your path. He'll give you wisdom and direction. And while you're at it, say, Lord, I want to be filled with the precious Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Ghost to direct and guide me. And he'll show up for you every time. You see, it's the anointing that destroys you. You've been anointed. We've all been anointed. We have to use the anointing that God has placed in our lives the way he wants us to use it. Because if I do that, the people that I can minister to, you can't. The people that you minister to, I can't. But I'm depending on God. I'm depending on God to lead me by his precious Holy Ghost. So now that you're saved and you're born again and you're filled with the Spirit of God, we're going to ask God to reveal himself to us. To let me, show me how to watch out for distractions. You see, a lot of times distractions and deceptions are come in to fulfill the desires of flesh. When you, when you, when you have your flesh desire to be exalted, uh, probably, uh, probably that's probably one of the most prime times when you need to put a pen and say, Lord, I'm your child. I will not be distracted. I don't want my flesh exalted. It says if I am on my hand under your mighty hand, under myself under your mighty hand, you will exalt me. I want you to say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. When we allow the Spirit of God to minister to us like that, oh, people of God, we'll begin to see the power and the anointing. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, we just yield to you. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the discernment of Spirit, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, faith, healings, and miracles. Lord God, every gift that's needed, Lord God, will assist it to the voice of God, and they will operate in us. And Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, as we seek your face, as we cry out to you, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit will manifest through us if we just allow ourselves. Just become available. And Lord, Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <coughs> I want to thank you for coming in tonight and join, joining us. But more than anything, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to let this word drop in your spirit and let it drive out every ounce of deception and unbelief. And let you stay focused and not get distracted. Let me give you an opportunity to give and sow your seed, <coughs> good seed and good soil. 
Um, just pay attention tonight on what's on the screen. Those are the ways you can give. And we're believing that God is going to cause it to be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, running over. And we want to thank all of you for giving and sowing your good seed, sowing your seed. The, the thing that we've been able to do is because you've been sowing and you've been giving. The thing that you're able to do, God is allowing you to do those because you are a giver. He's rebuked the devour. <clears throat> He's, uh, he, he says he, it, it's going to be given back unto you. How good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over. I don't care what somebody said. Well, you've been sowing all this time. You haven't gotten a good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over. Start confessing it. Don't let negative words come out of your mouth. I don't care what other people say. You are not going to say it. You are not going to repeat it. All you're going to repeat is what does God worry say about your giving. Or what the, in essence, what God worries says about anything that concerns you. Don't, al don't allow these negative words to come forth from your lips because they will hold you in bondage. Words are powerful and they will destroy you if you don't watch out. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your giving. Father, I ask you to bless your people as they give them. Lord God, you said that you're forgiven. We need to be a cheerful giver. And I thank you, Lord God, show them, Lord God, that as they give, Lord God, and, and, and that they give cheerfully, Lord God, they're giving because this is pleasing unto you. And I thank you, Lord God, we're asking you to open up the windows of heaven. We're asking you, Lord God, to cause miracles to manifest. We're asking you to bless the works of their hands. We're asking you, Lord God, to realize that this is a mandate from God and we'll not be distracted. We'll, um, we'll not allow deceptive words to be spoken to stop us from fulfilling the mandate of God, which is giving. We thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Again, you will not be deceived and you will not be distracted. There's a call that God wants to fulfill in your life, so you just allow him. Thank you so much. Go and be blessed and be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.